Hey folks, we're back to look at some negative feedback. In this video, we are going to look at the series parallel configuration. This is our voltage controlled voltage source, ideal voltage amplifier, perhaps the most commonly used configuration. And here's what we're going to do. Remember, we need a plus input and a minus input for the feedback because the feedback is going to come back negative, inverted. Op amp is perfect for that because we have a plus input and a minus input. Ideal. So here we go. Throw in an input signal over here. And here is my op amp plus minus. I am not going to draw power supplies just so that everybody's aware. Here is my little feedback network, beta. So this op amp has an open loop gain, AOL. We have a feedback factor, beta, which is really just a gain characteristic, is it in fact, ordinarily, um, this is just a voltage divider, so it's a fractional value. And what we're going to do is hook this up, as I said, in series with the input. So here's our ground connection. So. It's going to go into the minus input. There's our inversion. Because this is voltage output modeled, we're just going to take this. Here's our, our load. And we'll just tap off this as a parallel connection, right? So you can see how we have a series input connection and a parallel output connection. The output current can either go into the load or it can go into the feedback. So the, the direction through the amplifier, obviously, is like this. But the direction through the feedback network is like this. All right. So there's our loop. Now what I want to describe is the closed loop gain, ACL. And that's defined as V out over V in. So along the way, I need to um, define a couple other voltages. So the voltage that we see coming out of the feedback network, we will just call V feedback. Then for historical reasons, the voltage between the plus and minus is called V error. This comes from control system theory. V error meaning it's the difference between the input and the feedback. Okay, so given this, what I want to do is uh, write V out and V in, uh, describe them in terms of things like beta and AOL, all right? So the first thing that we could see, hopefully, is that looking back at our op amp, we know the gain of this is open loop gain times the difference between the plus and minus. In other words, V plus minus V minus. Well, that is by definition V error. So V out would have to equal V error times AOL. Now, looking at the input end of this, I can use a little KVL thing and say, here's my source, V in. There's a drop here, V air, and there's another one over here, V feedback. So V in is simply V error plus V feedback. Now, what is V feedback? Well, as I said, beta is just a figure of merit. It's a scaling factor. It's typically a fraction right, made by um, a resistive voltage divider. Okay, But it would essentially be our output voltage times beta. So you just think of that like gain. It's just a fraction, right? Like a voltage, you know, a, like a potentiometer. So V feedback would be V out times beta. Well, I already know that V out is V error times AOL. So we can substitute that in here, and I discover that V feedback is V error times beta AOL. Now, I can go back to my original equation. The, um, the value that we're going to get for V in is V error plus V feedback, which is in turn equal to V error beta AOL, 
So I can factor out the V error there and get V error times one plus beta AOL. And uh, V out, we already know, is V error times AOL. So V out is V error times AOL. V in, V error plus V feedback. V, in other words, V error plus V error times beta AOL, which when we factor that out is V error times one plus beta AOL. And it's pretty obvious you can cancel out your V errors and your closed loop gain is AOL divided by one plus beta AOL. Well, that's pretty cool. But wait, it gets better. It gets much better. If, if, we can say that beta AOL, that product, is much bigger than one, we can ignore the plus one over here, in which case we can cancel out the AOLs, and closed loop gain is approximately equal to one over beta. Well, A, that's nice because it's simple. But B, conceptually, it's really important. Because what it tells you is the open loop gain of the app amp doesn't matter. As long as it's big enough, as long as it's big enough to guarantee this characteristic, I don't care how big it is. The feedback network is what will control the system. Right? As long as they have enough AOL, it's the feedback network that controls everything. Oh, that's really good. You know, I mean, if I have a, one op amp with a gain of 100,000 and another one with a gain of 300,000, as long as the guy with 100,000 gives me, you know, this characteristic, they're both going to end up with the same closed loop gain. There's another part of that stability thing that we were talking about. Okay? Oh, that's great. That's just wonderful. Okay. Now, remember, that's, that's an approximation. As we go up in frequency, you know, what ends up happening? A open loop starts to drop off. Remember, we have a, a response curve that looks kind of like this. All right, so back here, it might be, you know, much, much greater than one, but up here, it might not be. So things start to kind of die off. Um, but for that good range of frequency, this is a really good approximation. Okay, so... Given that, what do we have as far as, um, you know, a realistic thing inside the box? Well, as I said, this could just be a, a voltage divider. So I could end up with something that looks like this. Plus, minus. So here's my feedback network. I'm just going to make a divider. Two resistors. I'll call this one RF for feedback and this one for RI for input, right? It's on the input side. And then my load is going to be out here. All right, so what's beta in this case? Beta is just the voltage divider, right? So what's the voltage divider? Well, if we assume it's unloaded, and ordinarily it would be, because the input impedance into the... Uh, plus and minus terminals is really, really high. So for any normal value of Ri, we can assume it's uh, unloaded. In other words, the, the parallel combination of Zn with Ri is basically Ri. So the voltage divider ratio would be the thing we're interested in, Ri over the total. In other words, it's Ri over Ri plus Rf. So if the gain is one over that, then the closed loop gain would have to equal at least as far as our approximation is concerned, Ri plus Rf over Ri, which we can simplify as 1 plus Rf over Ri. Now here's a really cool thing about this equation, right? This is a really important equation. It's so important, in fact, that I'm going to make it look three-dimensional. Ooh. It's not the value of the resistors, it's their ratio. So for example, if I want a gain of 10 out of this, 
It's a very simple design problem. I have to make sure that the ratio of RF to RI is 9, right? Because it's 1 plus. So if this is, let's say, a 1K, and this guy is a 9K, I know those aren't standard, but bear with me. 9K over 1K is 9 plus 1, there's a gain of 10. Well, you know, it would work just as well if this is 2K and this is 18K. Or, you know, 3K and 27K. Or, you know, any other pair you can come up with that has that 9 to 1 ratio. There you go. So there isn't a single right answer. Well, you know, the obvious question is, are some values more practical than others? Yeah. You don't want RI and RF to be too, too small. Because after all, the op amp has to deliver current not just to the load, it also has to deliver current to the feedback network. So if these values are too small, you run the risk of the op amp overloading because there's too much current. Uh, average op amp is going to produce, you know, maybe 20, 30 milliamps. So you probably don't want this pair to be much below 10K. It depends on the actual application, but maybe a few K. You know, you probably don't want it to be less than 1K if you're looking at a sizable swing, you know, like a 15-volt peak swing. On the other hand, as we'll see, we don't want the values to be too, too large. You know, I don't want to go like 1 meg, 9 meg, because that's going to exacerbate some other problems that we're going to come along with, like uh, DC offset drift, uh, noise, things like that. So there's kind of a happy area. The total of those two, which I'll just call RT, RI plus RF, uh, I'm going to say in general, you probably want to keep that below 100K. And these are just ballpark numbers. Now, this, this depends on the actual application and the op amp, but just to kind of ballpark it. You probably want to keep that less than 100K. On the other hand, you probably want to keep it more than 1K. And that'll, you know, give you something to deal with. Okay? All right. Obviously, the, the other questions that we would have would be, well, what's my input impedance? What's my output impedance? Well, at low frequencies, your Zn approaches infinity. Because you know, if you have something like this with a gain of 10 at low frequencies, the open loop gain on this thing is probably 100,000. So your sacrifice factor is like 10,000. And your Zn, because it's a series input, it's going to go up by a factor of sacrifice factor. Well, it's if it's like a 741 and it has uh, you know bipolars and a diff amp, your Zn is already a meg plus. Now you're going to multiply that by 10,000, right? So huge. If you have a JFET out here, you know, like a, a BIFET op amp, like an LF411 or something like that, the input impedance is already measured as you know maybe 10 to the 12 ohms. And you're going to increase it. Okay, so they're just crazy high numbers at DC and very, very low frequencies. As we go up in frequency, the sacrifice factor, you know, decreases, and also you start to get capacitive issues on the front end, and that drops down your input impedance. But at low frequencies, crazy high. Your Z out approaches zero. Again, it's a parallel output, so the output impedance drops by sacrifice factor, drops by a factor of 10,000. Typical op amp, like a 741, Z out without feedback, maybe 75 ohms. So, yeah, this thing is great. Now, that does not mean you can drive something like an 8 ohm loudspeaker, because this doesn't have enough current to do it. You can't get a 15 volt swing. You don't have enough current coming out of the op amp. But as far as loading effects are concerned, they're minimized. So you could have a, a 5K resistor here or a 20K resistor here, and you're still going to get, or a 200K for that matter, and you're still going to get this gain of 10. It's going to be dictated essentially by these two resistors and their accuracy. So if you were going into production with this, uh, you know, the nearest standard value to a 9K would be a 9.1K. Uh, 1K obviously is standard. So if you chose that, you know, we theoretically we'd have a gain of 10.1. Of, uh, and the variation on that would basically just be the tolerance of these, right? So your highest gain would occur when RF is at its upper limit and RI is at its lower limit. So if they're 5%, you add 5%, you subtract 
the minimum gain, the smallest gain, is going to be when RF is minimized and RI is maximized. Right? You just look at the gain equation, you can see how that works. Okay? All right, so here's a final little thing to ponder. I'll let you think about this for just a sec. What if I want to make an amplifier that has a gain of 1? In other words, I want to make a buffer. Input voltage, output voltage, same size, but I want to use the op amp to buffer because maybe this output impedance is um, you know, kind of low compared to the source impedance of my generator back here. So I just want to use this as a buffer. What values of resistance do I use? For a gain of 1. Question mark, big, big question mark right there. What is it? What's it going to be? Well, you know, you look at the equation and you go, well, it's already one plus. And a lot of people just sort of reflexively say, oh, I'll use 10K and 10K because that's, that's a ratio of one. Yeah, but it's one plus that ratio. So if you use 10K and 10K, you got to gain a two. Well, you would have to make this piece disappear. All right, it's got to be one plus zero. How do you do that? How do you make this thing go to zero? Well, you could make RI go to infinity. You could make RF go to zero. You could do both. Well, making RF go to zero is pretty easy. You just put a short there. Making RI go to infinity is also pretty easy. You just open it up. There you go. Gain of one. And when I say one at low frequencies, this is probably like point. 99998 or some crazy thing like that. It is darn close. Crazy high input impedance, low output impedance. As we'll see, it has a nice wide bandwidth. Distortion is low. Pretty darn close to an ideal buffer amplifier. Okay? All right. That covers the basics for our series parallel negative feedback. Ideal voltage amplifier. Voltage controlled, voltage source. You're going to see that again. Voltage controlled, voltage source. Okay. Take a break. Are we back from break? Already? Okay. I want to show you a shortcut, an idealization to help you get to this equation without going through this. If you think about what we're saying back here, there's two things that come up. The error, ideally, is zero. Second, the input currents into the op amp, the plus and minus inputs, also ideally zero. If you take these two assumptions, you can derive all this stuff very quickly. And we're going to apply this to some other circuits. How does it work? Well, you know, let's look back at this original circuit over here. If V error is zero, then the feedback voltage must be the same as the input voltage. Right? Because after all, we said back here, right, V in is V error plus V feedback. If we say V error is virtually zero, then V in is V feedback. Done. Okay, so that Input voltage drops across Ri. That creates a current. I'm just going to call that I of Ri. That current, I of Ri, is just Ohm's law, Vn over Ri. That current also flows through Rf. Because if you look at this node, the only other place the current can be flowing is into or out of the minus input. But we see the currents into the op amp plus and minus uh, terminals is also zero. So if that's zero, then this current through RF must be flowing through RI identical value. Okay, well, that current times RF gives you the voltage across the RF. So V of RF, Ohm's law, is I through it, which is Vn over Ri, 
times that value, which is, of course, RF. And notice the output voltage is the drop across the RF plus the drop across the RI. Do a little substitution action here. So V of RI, okay, we um, know that's equal to VN because V of RI is, is V feedback. So that's VN. And VR of RF is VN times the ratio of RF over RI. I'm purposely sort of rearranging that a little bit because I can factor out the VNs. And that's an R in there. Um, now, V out over V in is your gain, so you bring V in on the other side, and we get 1 plus RF over RI, which is what we created over here. All right? So these things are really useful. Now you're saying, well, you know, where did that come from? Like, how did, how did you get that? Why do you know V error is zero? Let's just throw a number in, okay? You know, and the problem I had over here, we said the, the gain is 10. Let's say uh, a open loop is, you um, know, 100,000. Okay, um, I'll put in 0.1 volts over here. Well, if I have a closed loop gain of 10, then my output voltage would be 10 times that or 1 volt. Now, how much signal gets back to V feedback, right? What's our V feedback? Well, it's the voltage divider ratio times its input, which is the output voltage. Divide, the divider ratio is RI over RF plus RI. In other words, it's 1K over 9K plus 1K. It's one-tenth. Well, what's a tenth of a volt? 0 0.1 volts. 0 0.1, 0 0.1. The difference is zero. Now, if you go through this you know extremely tightly you find out that this voltage is not exactly 100 millivolts it's a tiny tiny little bit off because we're making an approximation right we're back to this approximation if we actually put the numbers in here you know i say oh well aol is really 100,000. right beta is 0.1 there's my hundred thousand again well what do i really have I don't really have 100,000 divided by 10. Uh, uh, I don't really have 100,000, um, you know, divided by 10,000 for a gain. I have 100,000 divided by 10,001. All right, that one, you know, drops our gain down a little bit. So, you know, it's not 10, it's like 9 point you know, 998 or, you know, whatever it works out to. So, in fact, we don't have a full one volt at the output. You know, we have 998 and a half millivolts. So I get just a tiny little bit less than 100 millivolts here. But, you know, compared to our input voltage, yeah, this is a really good approximation. And, you know, as we've already discussed, the uh, input impedance into the op-amp without feedback is tiny. Um, you know, with, with feedback, it's even higher. So, um, these approximations hold really well. And we can use these on any of these sort of circuits. This set of approximations works great as long as the amplifier is operating in a linear region. If it's clipping uh, or you're trying to use it in another configuration like a comparator, uh, you don't want to say this. Okay, This assumes you have um, a stable negative feedback loop that's operating and the amplifier is, you know, acting in a nice linear fashion. If that's not the case, you can't use those approximations. You know, think of a comparator. Your V error is just the difference between these two things. You know, V error could be six volts. Who knows? Right? All depends on the values that you throw in. So we're going to take another look at this. Our next goal is to look at the parallel parallel configuration which is also a controlled voltage source. See you then.